Substitution therapy with human immunoglobulins has been used to prevent reoccurring infections in patients with primary immunodeficiency disorders for over 50 years. For most primary immunodeficient patients, the prophylactic substitution therapy with immunoglobulins is lifelong. Intravenous administration is currently often viewed as the standard of substitution therapy. However, use of the subcutaneous route of administration has increased during the last 15 years in Scandinavia and the UK and gives the patient and the doctor a therapeutic choice. This program is intended for healthcare professionals and will not only show the benefits of rapid subcutaneous self-infusion at home, but how it can be taught to suitable patients and how it improves the quality of life in patients with primary immunodeficiency disorders. Thanks to the home therapy, I no longer need to go to the hospital for my treatments. Now when I can take the infusions myself, I don't have to stay at home from school either. Home treatment with subcutaneous infusions have improved my life in many ways. I feel less stress, I'm more flexible and less absent from work. Clinical trials have shown that subcutaneous infusions not only maintain a constant level of serum IgG, but also result in a normal level of IgG. Once on home therapy, it is very important for the patient to feel a continuous support from her doctor. If not otherwise clinically motivated, it is often sufficient for the patient to visit the clinic twice a year to have a thorough medical checkup, including measuring immunoglobulin G serum levels. It has been shown that the patients on subcutaneous self-infusions at home report a better quality of life and a greater independence and freedom. Over the last 15 years, rapid subcutaneous infusions have been given successfully both to children and adults in Scandinavia and the United Kingdom. Subcutaneous infusions must be given regularly, most often once a week. However, it can also be given once every two weeks. Several studies have shown that subcutaneous therapy is simple to learn, practical, effective to prevent infections, well tolerated, and preferred by patients to other PID therapies. Furthermore, as a result of giving the subcutaneous self-infusions at home, the patient's quality of life substantially increase. Based on good patient education and continuous support, they cope better with the fact that they'll require lifelong therapy and feel empowered by having a therapeutic choice and being involved in their own treatment and being able to live a more active and independent life. The efficacy of subcutaneous therapy has been compared with that of intravenous infusions in a crossover trial on 30 patients over a period of two years. Half of the patients were treated with intravenous immunoglobulin for the first year and then switched to subcutaneous therapy for a further year and vice versa. Trough levels of IDG remained stable using both routes. Medium levels of IDG were slightly higher during subcutaneous therapy but the difference was not significant. There was no significant difference in the number duration or severity of infections between the two routes of administration. With weekly subcutaneous infusions, normal serum IgG levels are obtained. Indeed, the serum IgG levels correspond to those obtained using intravenous immunoglobulin therapy. Subcutaneous therapy maintains a more constant serum IgG level without a major decline before the next administration. As shown in a study, all patients on subcutaneous therapy, regardless of whether previously treated or untreated, reached serum immunoglobulin G levels within the normal range. Intravenous therapy is used at home, but the criteria for the patient selection is very strict. Poor venous access also constitutes a limitation in the possibility to obtain home therapy with intravenous immunoglobulin. In some countries, it is not allowed by law to have intravenous immunoglobulin therapy at home. Subcutaneous administration of immunoglobulins can be used in the hospital setting or outside the clinic. Owing to the well-tolerated administration and easily learned infusion technique, 
The subcutaneous therapy gives more patients the opportunity to benefit from home therapy. Uh, the majority of patients with PID who are suitable for immune globulin therapy usually qualify for subcutaneous administration. A clear majority of the patients have the ability to learn the subcutaneous infusion technique. Patients should be given the motivation to perform self-infusions at home by interactive patient education, be given continuous professional support, have a family and environmental support, have the ability to learn and perform self-infusions, have an informed adult present during the infusion. Home therapy should always be initiated at a hospital. Home therapy training programs should be provided by experienced nurses working together with the doctors. The education should provide knowledge about the disease, the treatment and the infusion technique. Face-to-face -face education and training with the patient is crucial. Group training with more than one patient can also be taken into consideration. Eight sessions have been found to be a suitable number of education and training sessions to provide the patients with knowledge about the entire therapy situation, not only the infusion technique. Patients treated with intravenous immunoglobulins should be given the same opportunity to learn as previously untreated patients. Once educational and training goals have been reached, the treatment can continue outside the clinic. To ensure control of potential severe systemic reactions, patients should be trained to treat an anaphylactoid reaction if it would occur. The infusion technique normally involves a battery-operated syringe driver and an infusion set with thumb needles or butterfly needles. The infusion sites are the abdominal wall and or the thighs based on the patient's preference. Needles can be placed at varying angles, from 45 degrees, as in the UK, and up to 90 degrees. Administration can be performed at two or more sites using two or more syringe drivers simultaneously to reduce infusion time. If required, a local anesthetic cream can be applied. Initial infusions may be associated with redness and swelling at the administration sites. This usually resolves with repeated applications. The recommended dosage is 100 milligrams per kilo body weight per week, or could also be 200 milligrams per kilo body weight every second week. However, the dosage regimen may need to be individualized for each patient, depending upon pharmacokinetic and clinical response. Initially, the infusion rate should be 10 milliliters per hour per syringe driver. If well tolerated, the infusion rate can be increased gradually during every subsequent infusion by 1 milliliter per hour per syringe driver to a recommended maximum of 20 milliliters per hour per syringe driver. During the infusion, the patient is allowed to move and to perform minor task and low energy activities. However, driving a car is strongly disapproved during ongoing subcutaneous infusions. The procedure can vary slightly from center to center and from country to country. Different needles and syringe drivers are used in different places. If not advised differently, the subcutaneous immunoglobulin product should be stored in the fridge at a temperature of 2 to 8 degrees Celsius. The product should be brought to room or body temperature before use. Check and set syringe driver to the desired rate. Wash your hands and lay out a clean preparation area. After checking the dose and expiry date, remove the tops from the immunoglobulin vials. Tops from vials could be wiped with an antiseptic swap. Draw up the immunoglobulin into the syringe. Use a spike needle to make it easier. Remove the spike needle. Attach the infusion set and prime tubing. 
Insert the needle of the infusion set and tape in place. Check for blood return by withdrawing the syringe plunger and by dislodging the syringe from the infusion set. If no blood returns, insert the syringe into the syringe driver and secure. If blood does return, remove the needle, throw away the infusion set and repeat the procedure. Switch on the syringe driver and give the infusion. Dispose the used materials and record the details on the treatment record sheet. After completing the therapy and with some training at the hospital, I was able to treat myself at home. We could remain in the countryside all summer without even going to the hospital once. It was great. As discussed in this film, rapid subcutaneous self-infusions given once a week or once every second week present a number of opportunities for both the patients and the healthcare professionals. Home self-therapy is suitable for a much wider group of patients. The subcutaneous infusion technique is very easy to learn. The therapy is well tolerated, effective and appreciated by the patients. It brings empowerment to the patients while increasing their quality of life. The subcutaneous route also offers the advantages of a therapeutic choice, involvement and responsibility in the treatment, more flexibility and an active life. It's important to offer the patients with primary immunodeficiencies an effective replacement therapy that will prevent infections. Subcutaneous IgG infusions is one choice.